Okay, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at hexadecimal numbers and also binary coded decimal. Alright, and this is a lot simpler than it might seem like because these are kind of strange words. Well, first thing we'll look at is are the hexadecimal numbers. And these are really important, especially when you're looking at, say, your colors of R, G, and B. A lot of times they can be represented in hexadecimal or in binary coded decimal. So what happens is hexadecimal, really, it's really two terms, hex 6 and decimal 10. So really when you add them together, that's 16. And so what it's telling you is that there are 16 digits in that number system. Decimal has 10, 0 through 9. Binary has 2, 0 and 1. But hexadecimal has 16. But instead of being 0 through 15 to represent 16 digits, it's 0 through F. So you have 0 through 9. And for the number 10, it's A, and then for 11 is B, 12 is C, 13 D, 14 E, and 15 is F. So this is how they're actually represented as a hexadecimal number. It's base 16 number. But however, in the computer world, when we display these numbers for programming purposes or otherwise, they're represented differently. They're represented as binary coded decimal. All right, so even though it's a hexadecimal number, we represent them in binary coded decimal, and that's what this representation is down here. So what I have from the previous lesson on binary, we were looking at a byte, you can see that these individual bits are all still turned on, and you know all those places from before was, you know, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. Those are the places, and you multiply those together, and it came out to be... 255. Well, what the heck is this FF in binary coded decimal form? Well, it is also 255. But of course, I just told you that F was equal to 15. So there must be something going on. And there is. So when we represent things in binary coded decimal format, what we're doing is we're making it, we're providing a simpler way to look at a hexadecimal number. And let me show you this layer here rakes so control z that don't want to do that I wanted to shift that all right so now I'll take a look at these placeholders down here now what I have are two I have these places with the ones place the twos place the fours eight place and the eights place and then I start all over again ones twos fours and the eights place so really what's happening is there's actually two individual hexadecimal numbers right in here and each one can have a value of 0 through 15. And you can verify that. Let's look at this portion of it right in here. Let me get my uh, the grease pencil real quick. All right, in, in this case, I'm basically dividing this up like this. So that's the 1, and that is equivalent to this one right here, that F. So if we were to add these numbers, the 1's place is on. So that's going to be an 8 plus a 4, plus a 2, plus a 1, because all these digits are turned on. So 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14, plus 1 is 15. And that's what that F is. It's equal to 15, just like there. There's that 15 for F up in here. Okay, and then in the same vein, it's th then I take a look at this next one, and this is a nibble. These are 4-bit nibbles. And this one also has all of them turned on. So it's also going to be 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. And then that's going to be this 15 right there. So now how I'm representing it is FF. And that becomes this byte, which is also equal to, it's equal to 255, just like before. However, when we, when we represent it in the computer, we don't actually just see it as FF. We use it as a hexadecimal representation. I'll show you down here. Down here, in before when I represented binary, the command in Python is 0 with a B. But in, when you represent things in binary coded decimal, you represent it as a 0 with a little x, sometimes a big x. Little x is more common. So OX and then FF, like that. So there it is. I'm saying this is a binary coded decimal representing two 4 bit nibbles, both having values of 15 each. And and then when you know then when you look at it in total, it still becomes 255. All right, it's just when you represent it in binary coded decimal, it looks like it in this form. Okay, so then let's take a look at a different number instead. Let's now let me go erase this real quick here. Okay, so now we'll, we'll try a different number for this one. Let's just change some of these up. I'll just make one up. 
Okay, so now what we have are two individual four-bit numbers again. We have this lower order nibble is going to be 1101. That's how I would say it. Well, 1101, if we take a look, that's going to be the eighth place turns on, the four, and the one. Just those three digits. So it's going to be eight plus four plus one. So that's going to be 12, 13. So 13 up in here is going to be, well, there's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There's 13 right here is D. All right, so that this is going to end up being a D, like this, and then this one is going to be zero one zero zero. So that's going to be the oh the only place that's turned on is the fours place. So that's going to be a four. So really, what it turns out to be is that this is the same as four D. That is my number in binary coded decimal and I represent that as 0x wow that is weird I think my keyboard's sticking 0x4d like that and that's going to be that representation of 4d so then to convert that to see what 4d is actually in a decimal number then we just have to evaluate it like regular then these become then you have to look at this as it's the 16's place, the 32's place, the 64's place. So then it's 64, because that's the only one turned on, plus 8 is 72, plus 4 is 76, plus 1 is 77. So this is going to be 77 in decimal, though we represent it as binary coded decimal. So 77 in decimal is going to be, well let's see if we can actually do that. Let's see if we can do int of ox 4 d See if that's good. There it is. So what I've done is that I've used another Python command called integer, and I've passed the argument of this binary coded number 0x4d, and it tells me the value is 77 as far as the decimal number. All right. And then you could do, of course, the you could work in the opposite direction and convert from, you know, integers to binaries, the hexadecimal to well, the whole nine yards. All right. Well, I hope that kind of gives you an idea because this is so fundamentally important, and that's actually, there's one, let me show you one last little thing really quick here. I'll just switch over here. Let me get out of edit mode. And I'll grab the UV image editor real quick. And I'll go into paint mode here. And I'll get a new window. I mean, just a new image. And I can press N and get here. Get my map. And here's my colors. And I've got, if I press a color, let's say blue, and I click this bar, notice it's represented as R, G, and B. And these values range from 0 to 1 in here, like this. So now in this case, blue is all the way on, but red and green are off, so that gives me blue. But if I also represent it as hexadecimal, notice the hexadecimal value. It has the first two are actually telling me, it's well, it shows you right there down in that little indicator. The first two are red, the next two are green, and the last two are blue. And there's that FF. So that's the same as 0xff. So that means blue is turned all the way on. So in, even though Blender represents it as 0 to 1, in, in traditional ways, this is actually represented from 0 to 255. 0 all the way off and 255 all the way on. I'll cover that again. I've showed that lesson before. I'll cover it in more detail here in the near future. Okay, well, that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next lesson.